Hello everyone. This is a beautiful question. This is a medium difficulty GMAT problem solving question. I'll classify the question as a GMAT 650 to 700 level question, right? More 700 ish than 650. It's from linear algebra. Concept tested is linear algebra, but a more difficult question primarily because look at this equation. The equation is 5x plus 4 modulus of y. So, you're dealing with absolute values on top of linear equations. Let's get started with the question. If x is positive, x is greater than 0, how many integer values of x comma y will satisfy the equation 5x plus 4 modulus of y is equal to f55? So, key data is we need to find out the number of possible values that x comma y can take such that both x and y are integers and x is a positive number which means x is a positive integer, y is an integer, right? How many such values exist is what we have been asked to do. The approach is very simple. In the next slide, I am going to be walking you through a bunch of inferences we can draw about x, y and this equation. And from there, we'll get an understanding about how x and y behave in relation to each other. List down possible values of x and y, count it and come up with one of these as the answers, right? Let's quickly move on. I'm going to start as a first step by rewriting this equation, right? I'm going to keep this 4 modulus of y on the left hand side. 4 modulus of y is equal to 55 minus 5x. Inference 1 that I'm going to draw, very key inference, that is modulus of y can never be negative. Modulus of any number is either positive or it could be 0. So, modulus of y is non-negative, 4 times modulus of y is non-negative, which means 55 minus 5x is non-negative. So, 4 times modulus of y, which is equal to 55 minus 5x cannot be negative, which means it could be a 0 or it should be a positive number. So, 4 modulus of y equals 55 minus 5x is a non-negative number, that much is inferred. Step to second inference I am going to be drawing, which is again an equally important inference, right. y is an integer, which means modulus of y is an integer, which means 4 times modulus of y will be a number, which is 4 times an integer, which means it is a multiple of 4. So, 4 modulus of y is a multiple of 4, that can be inferred. If 4 modulus of y is a multiple of 4 and we know 4 modulus of y is 55 minus 5x, the immediate inference is 55 minus 5x as a number is a multiple of 4. This could be a 4, this could be an 8, it could be a 40, it could be anything, it is a multiple of 4. Why? Because y is an integer, modulus of y is an integer, 4 times an integer will be a multiple of 4. So, 4 modulus of y is a multiple of 4, 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 4. Done. Super. We will move to the third inference, which is again a very, very important inference to draw. 55 is a multiple of y. x is an integer, because x is actually a positive integer, which means 5x is going to be a multiple of y, because 5 times an integer is a multiple of y. 55 is a multiple of 5, 5x is a multiple of 5, which means 55 minus 5x, a multiple of 5 minus another multiple of 5 will be a multiple of 5. So, we can infer that this is a multiple of 5. Combine inference 2 and inference 3. Inference 2 is 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 4. Inference 3 is 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 5, which means that 55 minus 5x is such a number which is a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 5. So, we will call it as the most important inference I am going to drop, which is combining 2 and 3, is that 55 minus 5x is such a number, which is a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 5. It is a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 5. It is a common multiple to 4 and 5, which means this number is a multiple of 20, right? So, inference that you are drawn is that 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 20 and it should be a number, which is a non-negative number, right? So, these are the inferences we have quickly summarize it in a printed form because you have done quite a bit of inference. I do not want to step into listing down things before consolidating it, right? The first thing is we are rewriting this equation as I had done 4 modulus of y is equal to 55 minus 5x. The first inference is we are drawing that modulus of y is non-negative, which means that 55 minus 5x cannot take negative values, which is inference number 1. Y is an integer, modulus of y is an integer, 4 times modulus of y is a multiple of 4, which means 55 minus 5x will be a multiple of 4, that is inference number 2. 55 is a multiple of 5, x is an integer, 5x is, an inter is a multiple of 5, 55 minus 5x will be a multiple of 5, that is inference number 3. If it is a multiple of 4 and if it is a multiple of 5, then we can conclude that 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 20 and it is a number which is greater than or equal to 0. So, this is what we concluded in the last slide, we consolidated it right now. Let us now go and see what all possible values can it take. 
let's look at what all do we have to factor in before we list down possible values, right? We're starting with 55 minus 5x because that's where the last slide left us with. First thing that we need to keep in mind is 55 minus 5x is non-negative, super. Second thing that we need to keep in mind is 55 minus 5x is a multiple of 20. We've deduced this as well. We're going to be deducing one more thing along the way. x is greater than 0. x belongs to the set of integers. So, x the least value that it can take is a 1, which means what will be the value for 55 minus 5x? 5 55 minus 5, which is a 50. So, as long as x takes positive integer values, 55 minus 5x is going to be a number which is less than 55. So, the third number, third thing to factor is basically 55 minus 5x is less than 55 because x is a positive integer. So, we need to list down such values for 55 minus 5x which will satisfy all of these conditions. It can be a 0 or it can be a positive number. It has to be a multiple of 20 and it has to be a number that is less than 55. That makes our life really simple. So, essentially multiples of 25 which are greater than or equal to 0 but less than 55. That is what we are talking about. So, it could be a 40, it could be a 20, it could be a 0. These are the only three values which are possible. Uh, 55 minus 5x is a 40. We will compute the value of x. So, therefore, 55 minus 5x, 55 minus 5x is equal to 40. Take the 40 to the left hand side, we get 5x is equal to 15, which means that x is equal to 3. That is one value that x can take. Is it a positive integer? Certainly, yes. More to the second case, 55 minus 5x is equal to a 20. Take the 20 to the left hand side, which makes it as 35. 5x equals 35, translates to the fact that x is equal to a 7. The last case, 55 minus 5x is equal to a 0. So, 5x is equal to 55, which means that x is equal to 11. So, how many values do we have for x which will satisfy this equation? x could be a 3, x could be a 7, x could be 11. Let us compute corresponding values that y can take and sum up this question with that, right? So, values of x are 3, 7 and 11. Corresponding values of 55 minus 5x are 40, 20 and 0. Let us take it to the next slide. So, values of x values of 55 minus 5x. What is 55 minus 5x incidentally? We rewrote this equation and we know that there is 4 times modulus of y. So, 4 times modulus of y, 4 times modulus of y is equal to a 40. So, modulus of y is equal to 40 upon 4 which is equal to 10. Modulus of y is equal to 10. Values that y can take are basically 10 and minus 10. 4 times modulus of y is equal to a 20 which means modulus of y is equal to a 5, which means y could be a 5 or a minus 5. Lastly, two more values for y. 4 times modulus of y is equal to a 0, which means modulus of y is equal to a 0, which means y could be a 0 or a minus 0. No two values as I said, it is only one value, y is equal to a 0. So, how many values for x? 3 values, 3, 7 and 11. Correspondingly, how many values for y? 2 plus 2 plus 1, which is 5 values. So, let us list all of them down in the next slide, right. 3 is a value for x. Corresponding value for y could be a 10 or a minus 10. So, 3 comma 10, 3 comma minus 10. 7 could be a value for x. Correspondingly, it could be a 5 or a minus 5, right. Quickly check it out, right. 5 or a minus 5 with a 7 and it could be 11. Correspondingly, y is equal to 0. So, how many values can x and y take that will satisfy the condition that x is a positive integer, y is an integer. Satisfying this equation, 5x plus 4 modulus of y is equal to 55. We have 5 sets of values which will make sense, right. Couple of things, do not rush into the question in the last minute. You have done a lot of good job coming up till this point. Many of us, what we will do is, we will say that there are 3 values for x. Correspondingly, because we are talking about a modulus of y, there will be 2 values for each corresponding value of x and then we will say 3 times 2 6 and that is one of the answer options which is that. But incidentally you will realize that because modulus of y is equal to 0, you are not going to get 2 values of y there, you are going to get only 1 value of y. So, going to the last step, right, dotting the i's and crossing the t's makes a difference between getting this question right and not getting this question right. If you got this question right, being a difficult question is going to add many more points to your score than a question much ahead in the, as in much before probably the second or the third question in the quant section would not have been as difficult as this. This probably is probably a 15th question or the 31st question that you have, that is if you have done well in the GMAT quant till that point. 
having done well, having got up till this point, sometimes we make this mistake saying that for each value of x, there will be corresponding to two values of y. We will not verify it. Please do not make that mistake. You have the time to do all of these steps and get the answer right. Getting the answer right is far more important than getting it quickly because quite often you will have more than adequate time to complete the quant section of the GMAT. Best wishes.